Welcome, my name is Catherine Rodenko. I am an independent nutritionist and contributor of nutritional articles for Trainer Magazine. The question for this session is around carbohydrate choices for horses in training and their impact on performance. Carbohydrate is the largest component of the horse's diet by weight. When reviewing a diet, we often consider protein content or perhaps focus on a specific vitamin or mineral of interest, such as vitamin E or selenium. However, carbohydrate is approximately two thirds of the diet by weight. In contrast, protein is typically 10 to 15% of the diet and oils will be even less, typically under 8%. The balance between the different forms of carbohydrate can affect performance, behaviour and digestive function. The choice of carbohydrate directly impacts on performance as it influences the balance between slow releasing and fast releasing energy sources. We will look at some of the key questions around carbohydrates, including what carbohydrates are, and how they are classified, sources of carbohydrates commonly found in racing diets, hydrolyzable fast releasing compared to fermentable slow releasing carbohydrates, and comparing profiles of typical racing feeds. What are carbohydrates? There are different ways of classifying or grouping carbohydrates depending on whether you take things from the plant's point of view or that of the digestive anatomy of the horse. Working with the horse in mind, carbohydrates are best classified by the section of digestive system in which they are processed, either the small intestine or large intestines. The site of digestion determines type of energy provided, often referred to as fast releasing for the small intestines and slow releasing for the group of large intestines. The group of carbohydrates known as hydrolyzable carbohydrates are those that are digested in the small intestine, also described as the fast releasing group. Fermentable carbohydrates are those forming the slow releasing category and are digested in the large intestine. Within the fermentable group, there are three subgroups of rapid, medium and slowly fermenting. Here we can see the types of sugars and more complex forms of carbohydrates found in the hydrolyzable and fermentable groups. In the hydrolyzable or fast releasing group digested in the small intestine, we have things such as simple sugars and our starch starch being a key component of cereals such as oats, barley, maize or wheat. If we then move on to the fermentable carbohydrate group digested in the large intestines, we can see that we have our three subcategories. In the rapidly fermentable group, we have two types of carbohydrate. We have fructans, which are found within pasture, and then we have some of our starch, which has not been digested in the small intestine and has spilled over into the large intestine. Starch is not desirable in the large intestine as it is related to several health problems, including colic, laminitis and hindgut acidosis. The second two categories, the moderately fermented and the slowly fermented groups, these contain our fibrous fractions found within forages, such as hay, haylage, or the various chaffs that are fed. There are many types of carbohydrates in the horse's diet, ranging from simple sugars to more complex structures. They are defined by their degree of polymerization, which simply refers to the way in which the sugar units are joined together. How a carbohydrate is formed and the type of link present is important, as this determines where in the digestive system digestion can occur, and therefore what type of energy is available. 
for horses in training, the type of carbohydrate of particular interest is the polysaccharide group. This includes starch, cellulose, hemicellulose and fructans, amongst others. Starch is found in significant quantity in hard feeds, while cellulose and hemicellulose, amongst other fermentable carbohydrates, are abundant in forages. Pasture is a source of fructans, which can change rapidly depending on growing conditions and daylight hours. Single sugars, also called simple sugars, are comprised of one unit only. They are categorised as monosaccharides, the most commonly known being glucose. For horses in training, glucose is a highly valuable sugar as it is the main fuel for muscles. Glucose forms the basis of many of the more complex structures, including starch. When two sugars join together, they are known as a disaccharide, the best known being lactose, which is found in mare's milk. Oligosaccharides refer to more complex structures where more units are joined together. A common example being fructo-oligosaccharide, FOS, which many horses in training are specifically fed as a prebiotic to support digestive function. Polysaccharides, our group of particular interest, are significantly more complex chains which are branched and so are not so easily digested as are simple sugars. The branch nature of polysaccharides, such as starch and cellulose, are the result of links between chains of sugars. The type of link in these chains determines whether or not it will be possible for the horse to digest this form of carbohydrate in the small intestine. We will now take a closer look at starch one of our key complex carbohydrates. Starch is the primary carbohydrate of interest when considering a hard feed. It is hydrolyzable, which means it can be digested in the small intestine, releasing glucose into the bloodstream. For horses in training, this is the most important quick release energy source. Starch is found in all plants, including forages, but the highest quantities are seen in cereals, such as oats, barley and maize. Oats are the dominant grain of choice for racing feeds. These would have a starch content of around 38%. However, naked oats would have a significantly higher starch profile, probably in the region of 50%, making them more similar to barley as a profile. Maize and wheat have a higher rate of starch relative to oats and barley and although starch is important starch can be fed in excess which is why racing diets are dominated by oats rather than being dominated by maize or wheat. Starch is made up of two types of sugar chains amylose and amylopectin. These are formed from glucose units Amylose is easily digested, however, amylopectin has a different type of bond connecting each branch, which the enzymes of the small intestine cannot break down. Feed processing, which changes the structure of starch and breaks apart the previously undigestible bonds, is a key factor in ensuring that when starch is fed, that the maximum amount of glucose is derived. Feed processing comes in many forms, from simply crushing or rolling the grain, to cooking techniques, including micronizing, steam flaking, pelleting or extruding. The amount of processing required for what is deemed efficient digestion differs by grain type. Oats have a natural advantage within the cereal group as they can be fed whole although processing can still improve digestion. Barley, wheat and maize cannot be fed whole or simply rolled. These require cooking to ensure that starch becomes available and the impact of cooking processes is much greater for these grains. The availability of starch is assessed through the amount of glucose 
released into the blood after feeding. Here we can see the advantage of cooking maize or corn versus simply changing the physical structure by cracking it or grinding it into a smaller particle size. The steam flake corn, which has had a physical change but has also undergone treatment with heat and with steam, is more digestible, meaning that we see a greater amount of glucose, our primary muscle fuel, released into the blood post-feeding in comparison to the amount released by the cracked corn or the ground corn. Starch is a fast release energy source being digested in the small intestine and the term can easily be misunderstood. Fast release does not mean the horse will suddenly have a burst of energy. The word fast relates to the relatively short time it takes for digestion to occur and glucose to be available. Looking at the maize or corn example, it is possible to see that glucose is found in the blood just 30 minutes after feeding. This is a rapid response compared to carbohydrates that are digested further down the digestive tract in the large intestines. Fast or slow? Energy is energy, whichever source it comes from or how long it takes to digest. However, the type of energy, whether fast release or slow released, does impact on behaviour, in particular affecting reactivity. When fed on higher starch diets, horses are well documented to become more reactive, anxious and overexcitable. Aside from the need for glucose as a fuel for performance and equally for recovery, its presence in the diet can increase reactivity. For most horses, the presence of starch is needed and is beneficial. Ideally, the level of starch in the diet should be considered against the stage of fitness. A higher intake of starch is not always beneficial. For horses prone to tying up, an excess of starch is one of the major risk factors and intake has to be carefully regulated. We will now take a look at fermentable carbohydrates. Cellulose, as an example of the fermentable carbohydrate group, is similar to starch. It is made up of glucose units. However, the type of bond is significantly different and can only be digested in the large intestine through bacterial fermentation. Cellulose is a key component of the cell wall of all plants, including both cereals and forages, but is found in the highest amounts within forages and some of the more fibrous co-products used in feeds, such as sugar beet pulp. The digestive process of bacterial fermentation that occurs in the large intestines yields different energy sources in comparison to the small intestine where glucose is the main product of starch digestion. Fermentation of cellulose and other fermentable carbohydrates such as hemicellulose and lignocellulose produce volatile fatty acids. Like glucose, BFAs are an energy source for the horse. The time required for digestion in the large intestine is much greater than the small intestine, hence the term slow release. Fibrous foods are typically processed over a 30 hour period in the hindgut. As the process of digestion and energy release is more gradual and does not result in a spike of glucose, the use of more fibrous carbohydrate sources is ideal when looking to provide energy in a more consistent format. It is often more typically associated with stamina. Resting in early stages of work are best supported by a higher inclusion of fermentable carbohydrates relative to starch intake and equally once fit to avoid a situation in which a horse can boil over, altering the main diet to reduce starch and to marginally increase more fibrous fermentable carbohydrates 
can help control the situation. Identifying feed carbohydrate profile. Cellulose and other fermentable carbohydrates are not analysed separately in the same manner as starch. Cellulose and lignocellulose are identified through a lab method known as ADF. By looking at ADF and starch values, we can get a picture of the balance between the fast release and slow release sources that materials commonly fed to horses will have. Cereals naturally provide more starch, whereas beet and alfalfa provide little starch, but plenty of fermentable carbohydrates. If needing to increase the amount of fermentable carbohydrate in the diet, the addition of alfalfa with 31% ADF and sugar beet with 25% ADF can help achieve a balance with a greater proportion of ADF relative to starch. If looking for a higher starch profile, grains will naturally have an advantage. Oats, the dominant choice for racing, have 38% starch and 16% ADF. That is just about half of the ADF value that will be found in alfalfa. Oats, of all the grains, have the best balance between starch and ADF, providing a combination of the two sources. If we compare oats with barley, we can see that barley has a high starch profile, but does not provide much in the way of ADF at all. Starch versus fermentable carbohydrate. How do we make that choice? Whilst both are sources of energy and equally valuable to the horse, glucose from starch holds an advantage over volatile fatty acids from fermentable carbohydrates when it comes to availability during exercise. Glucose is more metabolically efficient. When working aerobically at slower speeds, glucose is metabolised at nearly twice the rate of VFAs to provide energy to the muscle for contraction. As speed and exertion increase and the horse works anaerobically, the body favours glucose as the energy source over VFAs. As such, starch is always needed in the diet of racehorses and too little starch can negatively impact on performance. The temptation may then exist to push starch intake upwards, given its advantages. However, there are several drawbacks to too much starch in the diet. Aside from overexcitability, a higher intake of starch increases risk of disorders such as gastric ulceration, colic, tying up and hindgut acidosis, all of which can be performance limiting. VFAs derived from fermentable carbohydrate are available as an energy source when working at steadier speeds and contribute to daily energy requirement for basic bodily functions. VFAs should not be discounted as less valuable. A combination of both types of energy is needed. Getting the balance right between the two is no easy matter and is as much an art as a science. Hard feed plays a significant role in determining the overall dietary balance between fast release and slow releasing energy sources. Hard feed forms by weight the largest part of a racehorse's daily intake. The balance of carbohydrate provided through the hard feed will determine the overall balance of the daily intake. Forage, whether hay, haylage or chaff, will be a consistent source of fermentable carbohydrate. Hard feeds, in contrast, are highly variable in the amount of starch versus fermentable carbohydrate provided. To understand the contribution, we have to analyse our racing feed. The fibre content of hard feeds is expressed as crude fibre, and this value can be found on all feed tags. Crude fibre is a laboratory measure that includes most of the cellulose found in the feed, 
but only some of the hemicellulose. It also includes some lignin, a non-digestible type of fibre. Crude fibre is not a true measure of fibre in the feed, but as all horse feeds are required to use this measure, it allows for comparison between feeds. Starch can be measured directly, and whilst not required to be stated on the feed tag, the majority of feed companies provide this information on their website or through their nutritional helplines. Here we have two examples to consider. Both of these feeds are designed for racehorses in full training. The protein content of a feed has no correlation to the amount of starch or fibre present and so cannot be used as a predictor as to whether the feed is best suited to hard and fast work or to a steadier or more stamina related work. Looking at our example feeds, example feed one is a cereal based feed and contains 28% starch or 280 grams per kilogram. Example feed two also contains cereals but also a balance of fermentable carbohydrate sources such as beet pulp and soya hulls. This results in a starch value of 18%. So as you can see, the protein value on these feeds, which would appear on all feed tags, is identical. These are both 14% protein feeds. However, their starch profile is significantly different. Both feeds are fully fortified with vitamins and minerals, and so the choice really comes down to the type of carbohydrate profile that best suits the level of work and the type of training. As a rule of thumb, as the fibre content increases, starch content will decrease. In our feed where we have 18% starch, we can see that we have 13% fibre. In our higher starch feed of 28%, we can see we have a lower fibre content of 7%. This reflects the balance between fermentable carbohydrates and hydrolyzable carbohydrate. Combining feed with different levels of starch and fibre creates a situation in which horses can be fed in a stepwise fashion. The majority of yards will have a full work feed and a layoff or light work feed. Using these in combination gives flexibility to fine tune against workload and consider individual horses. The table below shows intake of protein, starch and fibre when feeding six kilograms, just over 13 pounds per day of different types of feed. We have a light work feed and a full work feed and also the profile when combining these two together on a 50-50 basis. If we look at our starch intake on our light work feed, which has a starch profile of 20%, the horse is receiving 1,200 grams per day. If we transition straight from our light work feed to our full work feed, this is a more traditional cereal based feed with 28% starch, we have an increase to 1,680 grams per day. That is a 17% increase moving from the light work feed to the full work feed. If we combine the diets together at 50-50, the increase in starch is only an 8% rise, giving a total of 1,440. As both the feeds are correctly balanced, for calcium, phosphorus, zinc and copper, and they are all fully fortified. It is quite possible to combine those feeds as needed to create the right balance between the fast releasing and slow releasing carbohydrate sources. In summary, there are many sources of carbohydrate that form part of the daily diet of horses in training. The site of digestion determines the source of energy produced either glucose from the small intestine or VFAs from the large intestine. Both sources are needed on a daily basis. The balance between these sources is important as it affects behaviour, digestive health 
and can reduce the risk of incidence of disorders such as tying up, colic and tying gap acidosis. By using feeds with different ratios of starch and fibre, it is possible to alter the total daily balance of fast release and slow release carbohydrates against the type of work and stage of fitness. For more information and nutritional articles specific to racing, visit thetrainermagazine.com.